Okay, first things first. Um, teammate A only, not teammate B, is going to click on this link for the Maze Lab GitHub assignment. On this page, teammate A is going to type their team name here and click the create team button. I'm gonna do the same thing, but this is just teammate A. He may be hold steady for now. Once you type in your team name, you can then hit accept this assignment. Thank you. Your teammate B at the moment. It'll all make sense. All right, does any team, has any team, teammate A not accepted the assignment? I wanna make sure we stay together. Okay, those of you who only have teammate A, just hold steady. But those of you who actually have everybody here today, teammate B, now it's your turn to click on the link for Maze Lab GitHub Classroom assignment. But you are, not going to create a new team. You're going to join the team that teammate A just made by clicking on that button instead. Oh, do, do hit accept. You do want to accept. Cool. Sorry about that. And then you're going to join the team in a moment. So those of you who don't have your partner today, just hold steady. But those of you who are teammate B, click on the link and join the team that teammate A just created. Those of you who partners is absent today, you'll need to help them on Thursday, like accept the assignment and join your team. Okay, it's just, you can help them out when we're back together on Thursday. So did you join the team or you made the team? No, I joined it. Cool. Has anyone not accepted the assignment at this point? Fantastic. Okay. Now both of you, teammate A and teammate B, clone this and open this up in VS Code just like we always do. Okay. So again, you can do that by copying the link here and then switching to VS Code. And then in the command palette, you can do get clone and paste it in. and decide where you want to put it. And I'm going to actually open it right here. Fantastic. All right, so I'm gonna check, what I'm gonna look for is I'm gonna wander around and I wanna see this VS Code screen. I wanna see that you've cloned your repository and you have it open. It should say maze-app-teamname in the upper left of your file explorer. And that's when I know we're gonna be ready for the next step. Are we cloned? Not yet. So bring up your command palette. So view command palette, type git space clone. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Paste in that link from, yep, perfect. Put it in whatever folder you wanna put it in. And then, yeah, open it up. You're just cloned okay? Cool. 
cloned and opened in VS Code. That looks good. To open up that folder specifically, that's going to be important. So like go up to the top and do file open folder. We want that at the top level so we can find your project. So it's probably going to be inside yep, your user folder. And then, yep, hit open. You probably have to hit allow too. There we go. All right, is it open in VS Code? Yeah, open. Good. Good. Cool. Are we open in VS Code? All right, fantastic. I will provide more context about what the Maze Lab is at the end of class today. Um, but right now, I, we're, again, we're really focused on like how do we use these features of GitHub that you had never used before um, to develop stuff as a team. What, what I am following to do this and what you'll be following in future days is the actual Maze Lab that's, that's published in Canvas. We're working through Milestone 1 today as, as an entire class. So this is what we're about to do. What we're doing here is a couple of different things. We're learning a workflow that helps us write code in parallel. Okay, this is the advantage of like working as a team. And this is why it's different than pair programming. We don't necessarily have a driver and a navigator for every part of this lab. Rather, each person is working side by side, we call the side by side programming on their own part. And then we leverage GitHub features and Git features um, to like merge our code together. Uh, and so to work more efficiently and effectively. We're going to be doing a couple of new things um, that are new approaches you haven't seen before and techniques that you're familiar with from AP Computer Science A. So for example, today we are going to do test-driven development, which you might remember from last year, right? Where we write like the skeleton of the class, but there's like almost no implementation. We then write the test. We make sure the test fails. We then write the implementation of the class, and then we run the test and debug it and all of that. We're gonna follow test-driven development today, but we're doing it in a team-based model where we can be more efficient because we can have someone writing the test at the same time someone else is writing, uh, implementing the class, okay? We, we are able to do this by using what are called GitHub branches. So when you, we're used to just committing in main all the time, which is fine, um, but we won't actually ever commit in main in this lab, okay? And next semester, you'll never commit in main on your project either. That's, that's standard best practice. So we're going to be creating a branch. Think of a branch as take a snapshot of my current GitHub repository at this instant of time and let me work on my own doing my own thing independent of my teammate. And at some later point in time, when I'm ready and when the code is tested, We'll bring the code back into main and go from there. Okay, so it allows us to work in parallel. All right. All right. So, teammate A, whoever you are, and the only teammate A right now, we're going to create a branch in which you're going to create the skeleton code for the maze class. Um, the, there's a couple different ways to do this. In the lower left corner, of VS Code, you can see what branch you're currently on. Right now I'm in main, you should be in main too. You can hit this little spinny circle-y thing to like sync everything. That's always a good idea before we create a branch. We wanna make sure we have the latest code on our local computer. And then you can click on main here and you can switch between branches. Right now we only have main, which is fine. And you can create a new branch. So we want to create a new branch. We're on main, so we're gonna create a new branch from main. So teammate A, click on create new branch and call this, uh, what did I say? Let's see what it says on the sheet. Call this maze skeleton. So your branch name is gonna be maze skeleton. Okay, only teammate A. Teammate B just hold, actually make sure they're doing it right. Like second pair of eyes is really important. All right, and then you hit enter, and you'll notice in the lower left corner now, it says May Skeleton, which is great. We're in a new branch. Whatever commits we make here will not show up in main, okay? They're just in this like special branch that we're working on. 
All right. Um, has anyone not created a branch? Yeah. Think. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next step. Um, we are going to make a new class. We're going to create the skeleton, like the mostly empty implementation for the maze class. So what I like to do is all of our classes go inside the SRC folder for source. So I right click on SRC and I say new file and I say maze.java. That creates my new file. Because the focus of today is stepping through and learning how we use GitHub to write software as a team, we're not going to code anything. Okay. What teammate A is going to do is they're going to go back to Canvas. And here's our to-do list. And there's this link here that says maze class skeleton. Teammate A, go ahead and click on that link for maze class skeleton. And here is all of the code for the skeleton thing. Um, what I like to do is I click on raw. And then I, on Windows, I hit Control A. On the Mac, I hit, on these keyboards, Windows A to select all. And then I copy it. And then I switch to VS Code. And I paste it in. Okay. Our maze class here, um, the methods that are we're stubbing out here in the maze class, you should have read about last night for homework. The homework last night was to read through that lab document. Um, and in that lab document, it says, implement the maze class. We're not implementing the maze class. We're focused on other aspects of the lab. Like I said, there's some differences between that lab document and what we're going to do. But it does specify all the methods we need to implement. So the maze class is supposed to have a two-dimensional array, a 2D array of squares. A square models a single square in the maze, a single cell in the maze. It has a default constructor. It has a load maze method that takes a file name. It has a get neighbors method that returns the adjacent squares um, for the specified square. We can get the start of the maze. We can get the finish, the end of the maze. We can reset the maze and we can display the maze as a string. Okay. These are all the methods in the lab document that we were told we had to implement. Since this is the skeleton, we've implemented as little as possible. The default constructor doesn't do anything. Load maze always returns false. Get neighbors returns an empty array list. Get start returns null. Get finish returns null. Reset does nothing. And two string returns an empty string. Okay. But that's okay. Because we've just implemented the skeleton piece. Okay. All right. Um... I'm going to double check my notes because I don't want to mislead you. Let's commit this. Okay, so teammate A, go to the source control button in your toolbar. One thing, actually, let's just pause for a second. One thing I want to share with you um, is one of another focus of this lab is to learn how to and demonstrate that we can write really strong commit messages. And so what I've added to our daily agenda slides here um, is we've never talked about writing a good commit message. Okay? Why do we write good, why do we write commit messages at all? Commit messages is how we communicate to other developers like your teammate and next semester your whole team and your future self. Okay, so you all have better memories than me. So you might be able to remember a few days from now, like what it is you did today in class. I'm going to forget later this afternoon. Um, but you need to leave these, you know, we often refer to these as breadcrumbs. You need to leave these breadcrumbs for your future self and your teammate. You don't need to communicate what you did because you can look at the diff for that, right? If you're looking at your git commit history, you can just click on the file and see what changed. You need to communicate the context. You need to communicate the why. Okay, you changed this thing, but why? That's the important thing that's usually missing. A commit message shows is a very, is an excellent way for you to demonstrate that you're a good collaborator. 
that is part of what you're being assessed on on this lab. This lab isn't just about getting the maze lab to work. It's also about demonstrating you're a good collaborator, okay? And there's a separate score just for that. According to one author, here are seven rules of a great commit message. And I'm going to model these for you, and we're going to do them together in just a moment. You may or may not even realize that there is both a subject and a body um, in a Git commit message. Here it says separate with a blank line. We're going to see in VS Code there are different boxes. I'll show you that in a moment. The subject line, your commit message that we think of, should be limited to 50 characters so it like doesn't cause weird wrapping stuff and just be concise. Um, I forgot like you're supposed to capitalize those is like best practice convention, um, which I forgot. So I'm going to try to be, model and capitalize my my subject line. Um, you don't put a period there. You use the imperative mood. Uh, mood. Um, if you're not familiar with what that means from your your com arts class, you wouldn't, uh, for example, say added skeleton for the maze class, right? Like that's past tense, right? You're going to say add skeleton for maze class, and the reason for that is when you get other messages from Git, the sentences will sound right. Like let's say you revert a commit, Git's gonna literally say revert, add, da da da, and it reads well. So that's why we use the imperative mood. Um, VS Code, I think, handles wrap, wrapping the body for us. We don't need to worry about that. In the body, we're gonna explain what and why, not so much how. Again, we have the Git diff to do that. So what might this, let's make this a little bit more concrete. Oh, if you're intrigued and you're like, this is interesting, who thinks about these things, right? Under extensions here, I've linked to uh, an article um, that I, is the best thing I've found that explains how and why to write good commit messages. So if you want all the nitty gritty details in terms of where these seven things come from, please check out that article. All right, so let's try this together. Um, up here in the message section, I'm going to type create skeleton implementation for maze class. And I think, oh, well, maybe not. I thought it would warn me if I typed too much stuff. And then I'm going to hit enter. So I guess it is all in one window. I'm confusing um, GitHub Desktop and VS Code. Apologies. So it's all in one window. So I'm going to hit enter a couple times. And now I'm going to explain more of the context, okay, the why. So again, this is just teammate A for now. Don't worry, teammate B. You'll get your chance in a second. So I'm going to say all required methods, the ones that were in what we read last night, for the maze class are defined but not implemented other than returning the required type as an empty or null value. And then on the next, I'm gonna hit enter, and on the next line I'm gonna say this is sufficient, this is the Y part, for the unit test to be written against this class. So the whole purpose of this is like, yeah, I certainly didn't finish the class, but I wrote enough of it so my teammate can write the unit test. We have never written commit messages like this, right? We also haven't really wor worked on like a multi-week programming lab before with a partner. Um, so that's what warrants the additional details here, both for them and for us. So capital letter, imperative, less than 50 characters, oops. Less than 50 characters. Try not to drag things around here. Um, and then context provided here. So go ahead and, teammate A, go ahead and hit commit. Go ahead and hit publish branch. And we're in, we're in good shape. Yes, hit origin, not upstream. If you're prompted where to publish the branch to, choose origin, not upstream. Good question. Oh, 
oh, does it? Why didn't they ask me if I wanted to create a pull request? Um, not, we're going to do it a different way. So hold on to that. Um, that's where we're headed next. So at this point, yes. Um, did you hit publish branch? I just hit push. Did, did you click this one? See, this stops everything in the game. Just click on origin. I think I finally fixed it, so you should be fine from now on. <laughs> um, so at this point, we have a skeleton for the maze class. We now have the opportunity to work in parallel. Teammate A can keep working on the maze class. Teammate B can write the unit test. And we can do both of these things at the same time as long as we work in different branches. In general, the way we're going to use GitHub branches is each feature we work on as an individual will have its own branch. So you and your partner will never be working at the same time in the same branch. You'll always be in different branches. You might have multiple branches you're working in at the same quote unquote time because they're like different features. That's okay too. All right, we're gonna go to github.com now. So teammate A, go back to your github.com account where you have your maze-app team name thing here. You might need to refresh the page. You might not. You should have a box at the top that says like, hey, Maze Skeleton has recent pushes X minutes ago, and there's this compare and pull request thing. Um, if so, you can just press that button. If not, you can click in the tab here for pull requests, and you can create, you click on this green button here for new pull request. And here we choose, we're, we use the term, we use the verb pull, we're pulling code from some branch into main. So notice this arrow is pointing to the left. So I want to click on the right drop down and choose maze skeleton and show that I am pulling from maze skeleton into main. Okay. So the destination is on the left, which I find unintuitive. So watch out for that. It should say able to merge. These branches can be automatically merged. That will, if we follow the, our procedures and our workflows, that will always be the case. So at this point, we can see all the changes we made, but we're just gonna click on create pull request. And it says create skeleton implementation for maze class. The title comes from the commit message and the description comes from what we typed in the body. So we're just going to click on the green button here, create pull request. How are we doing so far? Teammate B, you're up. Teammate A, hold steady. Teammate B, you're going to go to github.com. And you're going to refresh the page on github.com. And you should see that there is one pull request that is open. Normally, we would do testing before we accept a pull request. There's really nothing to test yet, so we're just going to accept it. So teammate B, you're going to click on the open pull request on github.com. You're going to see the comment from your teammate A person, and you're going to see the commit, and you can actually click over here on files changed if you want and see all the code they added, which is great. But on this conversation tab, you're going to scroll down and you're simply gonna click the green button that says merge pull request. And it will fill it all in for you and you can just hit confirm merge. We are not gonna delete our branches because this is our first time doing all these things and we might need to go back and look at them, okay? Normally after we accept a pull request, we delete the branch because we don't need it anymore and we have all the code. We're not gonna delete any branches while we work on the maze lab. We're gonna leave them all there and that's okay. We won't have that many. Has all teams, so those of you who are playing role of teammate A and B, did you also do this? Yes, 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 cool. All right, um, now let's see, who should we do next? Let's do teammate B since we're on teammate B. 
Teammate B, what I want you to do is to switch to VS Code. Teammate B, switch to VS Code. You'll be in the main branch. And it's really, really, really important that you click on the little sync button, the little sync circle down here to update main to the latest code, okay? And you'll know that that works because you'll actually see maze.java show up here in your file explorer. If you don't, that's going to be a problem. Yeah. Um, oh, I thought I fixed that. Um, you can do the get re uh, the remove remote thing again. Do you know what I'm talking about? So if you got an error, you can bring up your command palette. I didn't think you would have to do this. There's like the git remove remote, and you can remove upstream. And then hit the little sync thing. Does that fix it? Okay. I am, I'll write down to fix that. I thought I did fix that. How do you open the command prompt? I usually do, in, on your keyboard, it'd be shift win P, but you can also do it from the view menu. Get, get remote, get remove something, and it'll be the command there. Sorry about that. One of the most common mistakes, I guess I'll say, um, that we make when we're programming as partners uh, is that we forget to sync main before we create our next branch. So teammate B is about to create a branch, but if you didn't click on this, your code would be in the past you wouldn't have the maze class. And so if you create your branch, you're gonna branch off from the past and then your test isn't gonna work because there is no maze class to compile against, right? So that's why it's important before we create a branch, we always click the little sync thing to make sure we have the latest code. All right, teammate B, you are still up. You are gonna create a branch now, it's your turn. So click on where it says main, click on create new branch, and type maze test because you are going to implement the test. And then you'll see in the lower left corner, it changes to maze test. Um, I don't think so. Just create another one. Your GitHub branch history does not have to be perfect. It does need to be fairly clean though. So help each other out. Um, let's create a new class. So right click on source, teammate B now, new file, maze test.java. That'll be our unit test, just like we're used to writing from last year. Switch over to Canvas. Scroll down to this link here that says Maze Class Unit Test. Open that up. Click Raw. Select All. Copy. Back to VS Code. Here I select all two because I don't want this at the top. And then I paste. So I replace the entire contents of the file. And you just got almost 150 lines of code to help you write, or actually to complete your unit test. How nice is that? Incredible productivity. Well done. But not the first one? That's a great question. I don't know why. I was surprised by that too. Should you be getting errors? Mm, probably not. Scroll up to the top. Maze test, maze. Hmm. It may go, maybe it just hasn't synced up with like your other file yet. Give it a second. We'll see if it gets better. If not, we'll figure it out. 
Um, so teammate B, you have the maze test class now where there is a method with the prefix test for every method um, in the maze class. So we have test load maze, we have test get neighbors. I'm modeling best practices here. You'll be writing your own tests on Thursday. Um, when we're testing the neighbors, we don't wanna just pick one square in the maze and see if we get the right neighbors. We wanna test all the boundary conditions. Corners are tricky, right? The neighbors of a corner is tricky because you don't have neighbors in some directions. So I'm testing all four corners. I'm testing an edge of the maze. I'm testing an interior square of the maze, okay? I'm testing all of that stuff. For load maze, I'm not just testing if I can load a maze that I know is good. I'm testing that if I try to load an invalid maze, that exception is caught and the method behaves as documented. I'm testing that if I specify the name of a maze that doesn't even exist, that exception is caught and the method behaves as documented, okay? So this is like trying to be a very robust test except for test reset. Um, we can't implement the test reset method yet because we haven't written all the functionality to even do that thing. This will make more sense later um, when we get to like actually implementing the maze solver class. So teammate B, you now have a test and you'll notice a new button in your VS Code toolbar. It looks like an Erlenmeyer flask. Click on that. That's your testing one. You can spin open and see all the tests that exist within our package, within our, our project here. Um, you can run an individual test. You can run all the tests in a given class, like I can run all the maze tests, or I can run all the tests in the entire package, like I'll do right now. And when I do that, I'm gonna see that square test passes. That's part of our starter code. We don't have to write the square class. But we're gonna see that almost all of the tests, except for test reset, which doesn't do everything, fails. And you may remember, this is a really important part of test-driven development. We wanna make sure our tests fail at this point because we haven't implemented the class. If they pass, that's not a good sign because we haven't written the code yet. So we wanna verify that they fail. So this is actually pretty good. All right, so teammate B, we're gonna commit this stuff. So teammate B, click on your source control button in your toolbar, and you're gonna type an excellent commit message. You're gonna type implement unit test for maze class. And then you're gonna hit enter, and we're gonna explain more details, provide the context. What's the context? We verified that all implemented tests, hopefully you can spell better than me, all implemented tests fail as only the skeleton version of the maze class has been implemented. Implemented. The test reset test, here's like one of those breadcrumbs we're leaving. The test reset test does pass as that test hasn't been implemented since it requires, requires additional functionality. Gosh, this is hard to spell. Functionality in the square class. Whew. This is useful. I might not remember on Friday, why is the test reset test passing? I wouldn't think it would pass. Um, yeah, the test could be, you just haven't implemented it yet. So teammate B, you're gonna click on commit and then you're gonna click on publish branch. All right, we got like five minutes left. Can we switch to teammate A really quick and do one more thing? Teammate A, are we ready? All right, I'm gonna hit commit. I'm gonna hit publish. You can write your own thing, it's okay. You don't have to write what I write verbatim, not a problem. Teammate A, I want you 
to go back to main. So select, so you can click on the branches in the lower left, choose main. Okay. Maze test isn't on your computer because you're in the main branch. Maze test only exists in the, uh, the branch that team AB created. You're going to create a new branch called maze. So again, click on the branch. Well, make sure you hit the little spinny thing so you have the latest code from main. Click on main, click on create new branch, and call your branch maze, and hit enter. We're going to pretend that you've been doing this at the same time that teammate B has been writing the test. So you're going to crank through this whole class by switching to Canvas, clicking on the maze class, clicking on raw, selecting it, copying it, going back to VS Code, and we're just going to replace the whole skeleton. So just do a select all in VS Code for maze.java, delete everything, and paste in the new code that I provided you on Canvas. You just implemented the entire maze class in 30 seconds. That is extraordinary. Let me do a commit message first, and then I'll be right over. So teammate A, you're going to type your commit message. We can't test this yet, right? Because our partner is writing the test still. That's okay. But we want to save our progress. So we're going to say implement maze class. And then the body is going to say implemented all required methods. This required adding a reset method. to the square class that will need to be completed later when the concept of markings makes more sense. We actually didn't add the reset method, did we? We're gonna do that tomorrow, that's okay. I'm gonna cut that out for now because we didn't actually, we'll do that at the very start of class on Thursday, not tomorrow. What's up? Yeah, you're gonna hit publish branch. All right, so teammate A, you're gonna hit commit. You're gonna hit publish branch. And we're, we'll, we have like two more steps, which we'll do at the start of class on Thursday.